two. Good afternoon. My name is Rod McMillian. I call to order the March 21st, 2023 meeting of the Audit Committee of the Board of Education, Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee, at the discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison, may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's audit committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will serve their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on agenda item. As a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Jamison or Ms. Barr if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Jamison, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Lichter. Present. Ms. Joes? Mr. McMillian? Present. Thank you. A quorum being present, where we begin. Ms. Jamison, please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Barr. Present. Ms. Stevens? Present. Ms. Mana? Present. Mr. Fletcher? Present. Mr. Street? Present. Ms. Sample? Here. Ms. Crew? Present. Mr. Edwards? Present. Ms. Smith? Mr. Hartlow? Here. Ms. Webster? Present. Ms. Lewis? Present. Are there any other attendees present that I did not recognize? Hearing no additional names, I turn the meeting back to you, Mr. McMillian. Thank you, Ms. Jamison. Item number two, opening, uh, opening remarks. Good afternoon. If committee members have questions that are outside the scope of the reports presented this afternoon, please email Ms. Barr or me with your questions. We will follow up with appropriate individuals to get the answer to your questions. Item number three, approval of minutes. The live video footage of our last meeting represents the minutes of the meeting. The meetings stand approved as recorded. Item number four, reports. Mr. Strait, am I pronouncing your name right or am I incorrect? Yes, sir. You okay, are good. Okay, good. Good. Mr. Strait and Mr. Fletcher, please proceed with the FY23 purchasing dash contracts agreement and non real estate lease report. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. And I believe our report is going to be pulled up and shared. Perfect. Uh, so earlier this month, we completed an audit in the Office of Purchasing where we specifically reviewed contracts, leases, and agreements that were open as of October 21st, 2022. Contracts, leases, and agreements are executed for the acquisition of goods and services on behalf of BCPS, and they cannot be initiated until they are properly executed by the Office of Purchasing. So for this audit, our objective was to ensure that the execution of contracts, leases, and agreements comply with board policy, superintendent rules, purchasing guidelines, and standard operating procedures. Now, it's important to note that when we refer to leases, we are specifically referring to those that are non-real estate leases. And now I'll turn it over to Mr. Strait and Ms. Webster to discuss the results of this audit. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. Yes, uh, Ms. Gover, if you could uh, move it to page two, the report highlights, thank you very much. Um, the Office of Purchasing received a satisfactory rating for, for the audit. Um, the controls are largely operating in a satisfactory manner and provide some level of assurance. The controls we found in at, uh, to be adequate in addressing key risks, and there are no high rated issues identified. Now, although our audit rating was satisfactory, we are reporting one issue in this report. That issue is that purchasing has not implemented corrective actions related to their standard operating procedures as noted in prior audit reports. Uh, since 2019, there were previous audits that documented purchasing's lack of formal procedures, and now although purchasing's uh, SOPs have been revised, they remain in a draft format and, not, and have not been finalized. As a result, corrective actions related to the purchasing's SOPs from the prior audits have not been fully addressed. Um, I will now turn things over to Ms. Webster 
to walk through management's corrective action and any other discussion points that she may have. Ms. Gover, if you could go to page five, please. Thank you. Uh, back a few pages with the, the results, the detailed results. And Ms. Webster, do you have any uh, discussion points on management's corrective action for, for the results? The um, we acknowledge the that the SOPs need to be finalized, and we have been working on those as other competing priorities allow. And we are committed to wrap uh, to finishing all of the work on all of the uh, SOPs. I believe within a two year time frame and we'll focus uh, first on the SOPs related to contracts, agreements and non real estate leases. All right, uh, thank you, Ms. Webster. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to say in closing that the Office of Internal Audit would like to commend the outstanding communication um, that we have with Ms. Webster and our office uh, audit team. Um, audit requests were submitted promptly with detailed explanations. And additionally, I would like to highlight that the issue that we reported did not adversely affect our testing in any way. Our audit testing showed that sampled consultant agreements contained the appropriate approvals for execution and contracts and leases sampled contained the appropriate approvals and were executed prior to payments made to vendors. Um, Mr. McMillian, this concludes our presentation of the audit. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Lichter, do you have any questions? Nope, I'm good, thank you. Okay, I have one. Ms. Webster, you used the, a phrase, and I, I can't think of exactly how you said that, with non-competitive, you were working on the standard operating procedures, the, but you were working, you, 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 when I uh, believe the term was when competing priorities yeah, allow yeah. us time. Yeah, 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 that was it. So, and then you said within the next two years, will that two years, you know, will that be within the time frame that we need for any future audits? That's... If, if, go ahead, I'm sorry. I am, I, I am not, I believe the Office of Legislative Audits audits every three years, uh, but I'm not positive. I would Mr. have to um, yeah. ask Mr. Hartlove to weigh in on that. Yes. Or Ms. Barr. Ms. Barr, do you know the answer? Somebody know the answer to that? It's every six years. Every six years. Okay. So we that would we would certainly be within that time frame. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Ms. Joes, have you checked in yet? Okay. Ms. Joes is she's gonna check in when she she's unavailable right now, but she's gonna check in. Okay, we're going to move on. Thank you very much for that report. Mr. Edwards and Ms. Manna, please proceed with the FY23 SRO program audit report. Okay, thank you. If you can uh, go to the highlights page, please. Thank you. Basically, this page provides the reader with a brief description of our objectives, our results, and the audit rating. The overall objective of our audit was to determine compliance with key components of the MOU between BCPS and the police department. Also to review the accuracy of annual arrest data submitted to MSDE. Below, we will go over the results and the audit rating in more detail. Before I get into the results, I wanna make it clear that this audit was not a performance audit. We did not evaluate the overall effectiveness of the SRO program. Our main objective was to perform a compliance audit to ensure that the SRO program is operating in accordance with the MOU between BCPS and the police department. 
uh, please go to uh, page one of the report, um, commendations. Thank you. The commendations listed refer to areas we tested where there were no reportable issues and BCPS and the police department were in compliance with the MOU. We wanted to point out that BCPS has implemented processes required by the MOU, including requiring SROs to submit monthly reports, the hiring of safety managers, providing continuing education to SROs, the adoption of a comprehensive safety plan, and requiring BCPS staff in emergency roles to attend various professional development classes, including the Safe Schools Conference, Incident Command Structure Training, and ALICE Training. At this time, I would also like to mention that Ms. Lewis and her office were extremely courteous and accommodating during our review. They were extremely prompt with their responses. I cannot say enough about how much we appreciate that. So thank you to Ms. Lewis and her staff, as well as our partners at the police department. I will now go on to the results. Um, I will review the issues and our recommendations, and Ms. Lewis will provide a summary of management's corrective action for each issue. Please go to page two in the report, issue number one. Issue number one, SROs, are not consistently providing DARE at middle schools. DARE or drug abuse resistance education is a police officer led series of classroom lessons that teach children to live productive drug and violence free lives. Our review determined that DARE wasn't consistently provided at middle schools. Our testing indicated that DARE was not taught at 16 of the 28 middle schools in fiscal year 22 and at seven of the schools the SRO was not certified to teach DARE. Basically, our recommendation is for BCPS to work with the police department to ensure that all SROs are certified to teach DARE and that DARE is taught to all sixth graders. Ms. Lewis, please uh, review the corrective action for issue number one. And thank you, Mr. Edwards. And I would like to add that Lieutenant Thomas from the Baltimore County Police Department will be joining me in some of the responses as well. And I will begin um, with one of the things that has uh, come out of participation in the audit is the need for us to review and revise our memorandum of understanding. Uh, we do want to shorten that cycle of updates from five years to three years. I had the opportunity to look at some MOUs that other school systems are uh, using, and three years is one that I found commonly used, the practice of three years things change and that allows us to uh, keep up with the changes and reflect any changes in our organizational structures or procedures um, in a more timely manner. We will also update our guide to safe schools for SROs and administrators. This is a document that outlines um, the procedures, answers questions about the SRO program, talks about best practices for the SRO program. So along with updating the MOU, we will also update our uh, BCPS guide to safe schools for SRO and administrators. We want to um, talk about the conditions under which DARE might not be taught or the flexibility of allowing schools to choose the great program, gang resistance education and training over DARE if the administrator decides that is what is needed more in their building than the DARE program. We'll also make sure that we are in constant communication with our partners um, in the Baltimore County Police Department about what we're seeing happening in the teaching of DARE and reminding our principals of the importance of scheduling the officers to uh, teach our middle school students. And I'll allow uh, Lieutenant Thomas to add anything there if she'd like. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Lewis. I really don't have anything else to add. Um, as you stated, we will ensure that the, um, the teaching is done and we'll work with BCPS to ensure that those changes are made to the MOU. OK, thank you. Um, if you can move to the next page. Um, Issue number two. 
Thank you. Issue number two, the police off the police chief of police and the superintendent do not meet on a regular basis. Our review determined that regular meetings between the superintendent and the chief of police have not occurred since the closure of schools in March of 2020. Our recommendation is the superintendent and the chief of police should meet on a regular basis to assess the effectiveness of the partnership as outlined in the MOU. Ms. Lewis, please review the corrective action for um, issue number two. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. And yes, you are correct that during the pandemic, we did not have quarterly meetings, um, even though the superintendent and chief of police maintain regular contacts through text messages and calls. And so that in revising the MOU, we will change the language of regular meetings to quarterly meetings. And those quarterly meetings actually began with a third quarter meeting that was held on February 28th. Uh, 2023. And so we will identify the schedule um, moving forward for the quarterly meetings for next year by April 1st. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. If you can uh, go to the next page, issue three. Issue number three, SRO program evaluations are not completed. The MOU requires the police department to review evaluations from school personnel. Through inquiry, we determined that evaluations are not completed. The BC or the police department cannot evaluate the effectiveness of the SRO program without appropriate feedback from school personnel. Our recommendation is the Office of School Safety implement a policy requiring school personnel to evaluate the SRO program on an annual basis. This evaluation should address the effectiveness of the SRO program as a whole at each school. It is important to note here that the SROs are not employees of BCPS. They're in, they are employees of the police department and are funded by the county, not BCPS. Ms. Lewis, please review the corrective action for issue number three. Thank you. And so while we constantly look to assess the effectiveness of the SRO program and recognize outstanding SROs of the year based on feedback from our administrators, other school staff, and our students. We will be moving into a formal process of evaluation, uh, working with the Baltimore County Police Department to develop that instrument. And Lieutenant Thomas is just going to speak a little bit to what the evaluation cycle is like for the school resource officers. Thank you. And um, just to add to what Ms. Lewis is saying, police officers are already evaluated yearly by the police department every October. So we are going to work with the um, Baltimore County Public School System to establish a tool in order to enable BCPS to provide feedback on a program yearly to be included in the evaluations that they already receive. And the next cycle or the date of complete anticipated date of completion for that is October 31st of 2024, which will evaluate SROs for the 23-24 school year. Thank you, uh, Ms. Lewis and Lieutenant Thomas. Um, if you can move on to issue number four, the next page, please. Thank you. Uh, former SROs have access to BCPS technology. Our testing of SROs that left their assignments during fiscal year 22 and 23 as of December 31st, 2022, noted that former SROs remain in the active directory, meaning they still have access to BCBS email, Teams, OneDrive, et cetera. Former SROs could potentially misuse BCPS information and resources. Uh, we recommend that the Office of School Safety work with the Department of Information Technology to ensure that the accounts of all former SROs are deactivated and to implement a process to deactivate accounts when an SRO leaves BCPS. Uh, Ms. Lewis, please review the corrective action for issue number four. Thank you. And while no instances of abuse of technology have uh, surfaced from SROs who've left the program, we recognize the importance of making sure that we do deactivate those accounts and so I've already had an initial uh, conversation with staff in the Department of Information Technology. And so as SROs leave, they will be uh, deactivated and all former SROs that remain 
active in our system will be deactivated. The Baltimore County uh, Police Department will develop a process of providing timely notification for us so that we can then communicate that information to our Department of Information Technology. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. If, uh, can you move to the next uh, page and issue number five, please? Issue number five, the police department is not reporting information of students witnessing traumatic events to BCPS. The MOU requires the police department to provide information, i.e. the name, age, school, of students witnessing traumatic events to a designated BCPS email address. We determined that the police department has only reported one instance of this nature to BCPS since April 2020. We recommend that the Office of School Safety work with the police department to ensure that information related to students witnessing traumatic events, <coughs> pardon me, is properly reported. Ms. Lewis, please review the corrective action for issue number five. And Lieutenant Thomas is going to comment on that one. So um, what we are doing to, to correct this issue is we're going to reissue the Handle with Care policy semi-annually. Um, initially, we were only issuing it once a year, but as new police officers come into the department every year, we realize that we do need to remind them of this very important procedure. And we also reissued it uh, on February the 10th, and we have been seeing some improvement. Thank you, Lieutenant Thomas. Um, if you can move on to the next issue, um, issue number six on the next page, please. Issue number six, <clears throat> the police department did not submit the date of the charge for reportable offenses to BCPS. The MOU requires the police department to re report to the designated BCPS official information pertaining to reportable offenses within 24 hours of the charge. Reportable offenses are student arrests made by community-based officers, not on school grounds or at school-sponsored events. We determine that the police department does not submit the date of the charge to BCPS. At our request, the Office of School Safety obtained the date of the charge from the police department for a sample of 25 reportable offenses. 21 of these offenses were reported to BCPS between two and 240 days after the date of the charge. Accordingly, the Office of School Safety should request the date of the charge for all reportable offenses. This data should be used to work with the police department to ensure that all reportable offenses are reported to BCPS within 24 hours of the charge as required by the MOU. Ms. Lewis, please uh, review the corrective action for issue number six. So on behalf of BCPS, we will continue to communicate if we are not receiving uh, the information related to reportable offenses in a timely manner. And Baltimore County Police Department has indicated that they will request their central records division to add the date of the charge in its reports to BCPS that will make it more user friendly and easily identifiable as to when the incident occurred. Thank you. Did you have anything uh, to add there, Lieutenant Thomas? Sure. Um, we actually started that process on March the 8th of 2023. The Julian date was always on the reportable offenses report. However, we realized that it would be more user friendly to just write the date in its regular format. And that process has already started. Thank you, Lieutenant Thomas. Um, if you can move on to the next issue, please, on the next page. Issue number seven, uh, professional development is not provided to BCPS building security monitors. The MOU requires that the police department will uh, provide professional development for building security monitors as agreed upon by both agencies. Through inquiry with BCPS facilities management personnel, we determined that the police department does not provide professional development to building security monitors. 
We recommend that BCPS work with the police department to ensure that all building security monitors receive professional development as agreed upon by both agencies. Ms. Lewis, please review the corrective action for number seven. Thank you. So the Department of Facilities Management and Strategic Planning will determine what, if any, training is needed for their building security monitors and communicate that with us. We have already had one initial meeting, and so we will be planning uh, training for them in the future uh, to address any needs that they have. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Uh, please uh, go to the next page, please. MSDE reporting. Thank you. Our other audit objective was to evaluate whether the annual reporting of arrest data to MSDE is accurate and timely. COMAR requires local school systems to report data on school arrests and referrals to law enforcement agencies or the Department of Juvenile Services annually. BCPS reports this data to MSDE on an annual basis. The MSDE Student Data Collection Manual basically defines reportable arrest as arrest made by school personnel. Internal Audit reviewed fiscal year 21 arrest data and noted that arrests initiated by a school assigned SRO were omitted from the submission to MSDE. Internal Audit contacted MSDE to determine if these arrests should have been omitted from the submission. MSDE interprets that arrests initiated by SROs should be included in the annual submission of arrest data. However, BCPS interprets that SROs are not considered school personnel and their arrests should not be reported to MSDE. The BCPS Office of Law advised the Office of School Safety to continue to report arrest data based on the guidelines in the menu, and I'm sorry, the guidelines in the manual until clarifying guidance is received from MSDE. Please go on to page 10, audit rating, objective scope, and methodology. This page provides additional information related to our overall audit objectives and our audit methodology for achieving those objectives. It is also where we discuss the overall audit rating. Our audit rating for this audit is needs improvement. Uh, please uh, go to page 12 in the report. It's two pages away. I believe it's the colored chart appendix B. Yes, thank you. As you can see here, the needs improvement rating falls in the middle of our rating scale. A rating of satisfactory would indicate that no medium or high uh, rated issues were noted, and a rating of unsatisfactory would indicate that most of the issues were rated as high, requiring urgent corrective action. Uh, for this audit, only one of the issues was rated high, with the remaining issues rated as either low or medium. Um, so the rating uh, that we gave this audit was needs improvement. And uh, basically that concludes um, our presentation of the audit report. Um, at this time, myself or, or Ms. Lewis can answer any questions you may have. Committee members, any questions? I'm good. I appreciate the thoroughness of it and how you laid it out. It was easy to follow, so thank you. Ms. Joes is called in. Ms. Joes, any questions? OK, I've, I've got a couple. Uh, Lieutenant Thomas, are you the liaison between the police department and Baltimore County Public Schools? I am the um, assistant commander of the Youth and Community Resources Services Unit. Sergeant Knox um, is the liaison with the school system. So I um, work with Sergeant Knox works with me, but he's the, the primary liaison at this time. OK, and and the one item, I think it was maybe the third one about the evaluation of the SRO program. And it has to do with, you know, the school personnel following through on that. Can we go back to that page? Sure, turning back to it right now as we speak. Hmm. 
Ms. Gover, okay. issue three. Yeah, issue three on page four. OK, I'm I'm right. I'm there. OK, and the school personnel, is this going to fall back on the principal to be responsible for this? So they already received their evaluations from the police department. The only thing that we would be requesting administrators to do is to provide feedback and we just have to help BCPS develop a tool in order for them to do that. So yes, it will be administrators. They can work in conjunction with their assistant principals because they work closely <clears throat> with the SROs daily. So we would like some feedback to include in their yearly evaluations. <clears throat> And, and just from you know my experience from being in a school for 35 years and for a long time we didn't have sros you know i was there before that ever happened Me uh, too. <laughs> and, and then i saw you know it progressed to the point that some schools have two and some schools have three yeah uh, but it, it, you, you know there seemed to be some there was some conflict at times about the police officers wanted to go a certain route with uh an incident and the administration didn't want to go that route for whatever reason. Now, if if it comes down to that, who who makes that decision? Does the administrator say, "Wait, wait a minute, we're not we're not going that way," or can the police officer call in their supervisors and say, "We want to pursue this"? Which so, what happens there? So, if if it's a police issue and it's handled over to the police and it's criminal in nature, police are going to take the lead. Um, if it's a school issue, administrators will take the lead. So the idea is, you know, if it's not a 911 issue, an issue that you would actually pick up the phone and call 911 for, you probably shouldn't be calling the police unless it's more of a mentor situation or something where the police officer may have a rapport with the student or may be able to talk to the student. But if it's criminal in nature, the police will always take the lead. In addition, I think we should speak to the training that we're going to provide to administrators on how to use that tool also, because there are some things that are absolutely school duties and not necessarily police related. So we wanna make sure that things are not included that would not necessarily be assigned to a police officer in a building. And, and, and I'd like to add- yeah, yeah, please continue. One of the things that we try to stress with our administrators and include in that guide for administrators and SROs is the difference between discipline, in the case the administrator takes over, and then criminal behavior, as Lieutenant Thomas said. So there's a difference between, and sometimes there's a fine line between the two, uh, but working together, we establish the expectations of administrators for responding to disciplinary infractions and for SROs responding to criminal behavior. And, and so when you would, when you address training for the administrators, I think that's a, a great point because there's going to be issues. You know, some administrators might not want to call the police in and, you know, because they're concerned that it's going to go that way and they don't want it to go that way. So they they might be reluctant on calling them in. But if they're trained and and how to do that and and how to pursue that, I think that that's going to benefit everybody involved. Myself. Okay. Oh, we agree. Uh, thank you very much. And I had one other question later on about the school security monitors. Are they like the are they the school security people? Would they be housed? at a central location studying monitors, you know, the, the different cameras? Would they be off site of a school studying cameras? Uh, 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 thank you. Do you want to take that, April? I can. Sure, go ahead. No, I mean, I mean we, we spoke with uh, facilities, basically the, the building security monitors, uh, they're focused on the uh, building's physical security. They respond to school alarms, um, physical building issues after business hours and complaints. Um, I think they're driving around a lot. They're doing a lot of, um, you know, monitoring, uh, you know, from school to school. They have uh, uh, various schools that they are assigned to. So I think they're on the move and they're and that's what they do. They, they've written and, and when they're not uh, responding to calls, they're just randomly visiting BCPS properties to do those types of uh, inspections and and monitoring. OK, thank you. And they do have a 
And, and they do have a station uh, within the Department of Facilities where they're able to access all of the cameras throughout the system. And so someone is there uh, 24 hours a day in the event that camera footage needs to be pulled up. If one of the security monitors saw something, they'd be able to pull it up on the cameras and get a look at what's happening and making contact with the Baltimore County Police Department as necessary if a response from them is required. Great. Uh I'm, I think any any other questions, Miss Miss Joe's? Any questions? Okay. It sounds to me like there was a lot of cooperation between the police department and BCPS and and doing this audit. Are there plans to go back and you know within a year, eighteen months or whatever, and looking at these recommendations and seeing how many of them have been have been followed through on? Are there any plans to do that? Absolutely, and we have identified some completion dates. Um, our work has already begun with that, and so we will be providing updates around our completion of the corrective actions. Great. Thank you very much for your help. So we're going to move on from there. Thank you very much for that report. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Now thank let me... you, Lieutenant Thomas, for joining our meeting. We appreciate it. Ms. Lewis and Ms. Webster, thank you. Thank you very much. Now to item Thank number you. five, new business. Mr. Fletcher, please proceed with investigations update. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. And Ms. Gerber, if you would, we're, we're going to start on page three. Yes, right there in table one, page three. That's perfect. So this is a report of our investigative statistics for the month of February 2023. And starting here on page three, uh, we can take a look and you'll see that in February we received eight cases. And table one here summarizes that, I'm sorry, summarizes those cases, which show that two will actually be kept and, and um, investigations performed by internal audit. And two will be closed with a memo to file as the information provided was not in the purview of the hotline. And so for the two cases kept for investigation by internal audit, you'll see that both here were classified as a misuse of resources. And Ms. Gover, we're actually going to slide on to the next page down to table two. Perfect. That's perfect right there. And so I will make reference to tables on other pages, but we'll stay right here uh, for the remainder of, of this update. Uh, so as we move on to table two here on page four, we note that in addition to the eight new cases received, 18 cases were already open from the previous month. And so there were 26 cases open throughout the month of February. And then during the month, 13 cases were closed. And so as a result um, of those 13 closures, that left us with 13 cases still open as of the end of February. And so for the Office of Internal Audit Investigations, which are there in the first column, you'll notice that 12 were open throughout the month, and then two were closed with both being substantiated. And so as a result, there were 10 cases still open at the end of the month. And then the details for all of those cases for internal audit investigations are available in table three, which is below on page five. Now for the management investigations, which are in that second column, two were open throughout the month of February and both uh, still remain open at the end of the month. Now, details for those cases are available on table four, which is located below on page six. And then finally, for the cases that are outside the purview of the hotline, uh, which are over in the far right column titled Memos to File, 12 were open throughout the month and ultimately nine were closed, which resulted in three still being open as of February 28th. And the details for all of those cases are available down below on page seven, where we have table five. And so, Mr. McMillian, with that, I turn it back over to you for any questions related to our investigative update. Thank you very much, Mr. Fletcher. Committee members, any questions for Mr. Fletcher? Hearing no questions, I'm going to move on. Thank you very much for your report. Item number six, six announcements. The next meeting of the Audit Committee will be on Tuesday, April 11, 2023 at 4.30 p.m. Item seven, administrative function. 
I will now entertain a motion to convene an administrative function section to discuss committee operations and investigations conducted by the staff of the Office of Internal Audit that are required by the Audit Committee Charter. May I have a motion? Yes, I make the motion, Lichter. Ms. Lichter, do we have a second? Second, Joe. Great, Ms. Joe stepped up, made the second. It has been properly moved and seconded that we convene an administrative function session to determine these matters. Ms. Jameson, will you please call the roll? Ms. Lichter? Present. Ms. Joes? Present. Mr. McMillian? Present. Thank you Thank very you. much. And we'll see everybody on April 11th. Enjoy your spring break. Thank you.